Epiphone Casino in a beautiful natural finish. Do I dig this pony? Let's find out. Hey, how's it going? I think uh, Beatles fans should get that reference. It's a name of a song. I also think Beatles fans will get this guitar. I don't mean they're gonna buy it. I mean, they'll understand the reference, especially if you've watched uh, the Get Back documentary lately and you see John Lennon playing this electric guitar. Well, I mean the original, this is just a reissue, but he's playing it for the whole eight hours. Not, ne not exactly eight hours, but through the whole documentary. So. Kind of gives you a little bit of gas for uh, something like that. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. But first, click a like on the video. That's the first thing you do. You always click like, no matter what, right? That's just how YouTube works. Quick full disclosure, I bought this guitar at a local store called Long McQuaid. I also bought a case, Yorkville. So those Yorkville cases, they fit the guitar perfectly and they smell like Teen Spirit, which we all know smells like vanilla. No, but seriously, they, uh, they smell like vanilla and apparently Yorkville and Long McQuaid are either the same company or one's a parent company, something like that. And I think Yorkville has made the Gibson paste. That's not true. That's totally not true at all. You can look that up, but that's not right. Yorkville at one point made the Gibson cases. They still might, I'm not totally sure, but part of the vanilla smell is in those Gibson cases that Yorkville made. So buy a Yorkville case. The whole point is vanilla. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's not even part of this video. So this is an Epiphone Casino. And this is uh, your made in China. Well, they say handcrafted in China. I can't prove it's handcrafted in China. Could be foot crafted in, in somewhere else. I don't know if they're using they probably stupid stuff. Yeah, so it's uh, inspired by the original Epiphone casinos, which were made in the US back in the 60s. Obviously the one that John Lennon had was an original. This is not part of the inspired by Gibson line because that would make no sense at all. It's actually Gibson is inspired to make Epiphone casinos. Yeah, so this is a Chinese reissue. There's also a Made in USA line. You can go take a look at Epiphone's website and you'll see there's a, a section. They, they do a few Epiphone guitars in uh, the US. So that's not what this is. This is uh, slightly more affordable. This is like, uh, I think like $600, $700 in the States. And right now in Canada, $929. So things have gone up so much, probably $800 last year. But uh, you're looking close to a thousand. If you're looking at the USA model, you're talking like 3,000, 3,600, I think in Canada, 2,900 in the US. Don't quote me on those prices because prices are all over the place right now. So yeah, before we get going, if you did want to check one out, you can always, uh, I always recommend checking out your local music stores. If you can, you want to feel it, right? You want to hold it in your hands and uh, listen to it, see if it's something you want. And if you can't, I've got you covered. I've got affiliate links for Sweetwater, Toman, Reverb, Amazon, uh, eBay, everywhere if you, if you want to get it. And the affiliate links always help support the channel. The affiliate links, what they are, I always explain this, the affiliate links, they, uh, they give me a perk. They don't cost you anything more. I take that money and I throw it into uh, guitars. Literally, you can throw it right in here, these F-holes. So let's do a quick rundown of the guitar. Then we'll get into a very detailed deep dive with all the specs and everything. And then I'll give you my summary at the end, my pros and cons, and uh, what I think of these guitars. Again, I always read the specs on these sites, right? I'm seeing conflicting specs on this guitar, so you have to correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, let's go down the guitar here. It's got the Epiphone Casino headstock with the E, or maybe that's a W, I don't know, you tell me. Uh, six tuners, mahogany neck. Now here's where I, I saw some conflicting information. It's either a rosewood fingerboard or pow ferro. I'm going with rosewood just because I have other rosewood necks, uh, fingerboards I mean, and uh, I, it looks like rosewood to me, but uh, from my experience, Pau Ferro is a little bit lighter and like more gray, but anyways, let me know in the comments. Uh, coming on down here, two uh, P90 pickups, we've got a three-way selector, we've got two tone, two volume, and we got your output jack in the front, and it's fully hollow body. There's nothing else in it. That's a quick overview. Let's get into the deep dive. Okay, so let's dive deep. We'll start with the, the weight of the guitar. Being a hollow body, I assume to be really light. And it was lighter than I expected because of the size. I don't know, it's, it's deceiving kind of. Just over six pounds, 2.889 kilograms. So really, really nice and light. 
And here's the resistance of the pickups. There was the neck, there's the neck and bridge, and then there's the bridge. There you go. Now, taking some neck measurements. There's the, uh, the nut, and then down by the 12th fret, and then up where the neck meets the body, which is the 16th fret, and then at the very, very end of the, of the neck there. And just the thickness right around the 12th fret. So there you go, some neck measurements. Let's get inside the guitar. There's no pick guard. Well, uh, sorry, there is a pick guard that you got to take off first. I was going to say that the uh, pickups aren't attached to the pick guard, but they are blocked by the pick guard. So take it off. There's some close ups there. And then uh, just taking a look at it. So there's, yeah, one, one screw on the side. It's just like a Les Paul or any other kind of guitar like that. Two screws holding in the, the pickups. That's it. So there's no pickup height adjustment for these. Uh, with those screws anyways So then just taking a look inside get your neck pick ups BHC And then we'll do the uh, I just wanted to take a look inside and actually take a look at the layers It looks like a cake kind of like a vanilla cake and you can see the layers of maple oh, I'm hungry now. I want to eat some maple maple cake. I don't even know if that's a thing Okay, let's take out the uh, bridge pickup getting a couple snapshots. You got a little behind the scenes snapshot there of me doing snapshots taking out the the bridge pickup and then taking a look inside again and it's the bridge pick ups or is it pick ups i don't know you tell me here's some layers again layer cake that's what i was thinking. is that a movie i forget i'm getting off topic here let's get back on topic do you like it better with the pick guard or not see what they're hiding under the pick guard they're like god ah, nobody's going to notice the little paint job that's kind of messed up these are little finish flaws I noticed that they were trying to hide. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's not a big deal to me, but it might be to somebody else, so take note. And again, this is one, one guitar. Other guitars might be totally fine, so. Okay, all right, I'm on Epiphone.com. I'm gonna read all the specs back here. So the body is an arch top, that's the shape. The body material is layered maple. The top is five ply layered maple with basswood bracing. So you can actually see the layers when I showed the close-ups. The binding on the headstock is none. I don't even know why they'd say that. The neck is mahogany. Profile is a slim taper D profile. Scale length, 24.75 inch. Fingerboard material is pow ferro with perloid parallelogram inlays. Now I think it looks like, I think it looks like rosewood, but that's just me. Fingerboard radius, 12 inch. Number of frets, 22. Nut width 1.68 inch and the joint 16th fret neck joint and that's really important I'll mention that I'll mention uh, why later all right moving on to the hardware the finish is nickel the bridge is a lock tone tunematic tailpiece is traditional trapeze tuning machines vintage style epiphone pick guard is a three ply white black white with metal e control knobs vintage style gold with metal inserts and with pointers and the pickup covers are nickel now, the electronics, the neck pickup is a Dog Ear P90T Classic. The bridge pickup is a Dog Ear P90R Classic. That's treble and rhythm. That's what the T and R stand for. Controls, two volume, two tone. We got a three-way Epiphone toggle for the pickup selector. The output jack is a quarter inch Epiphone heavy duty. Oh, this is interesting. The string gauge, the Dario, 10 to 46. I did not know that. I assumed they'd be Gibson strings.
There you go. There you go. And here I am. And there you go. Hopefully you're not, you didn't go already. Hopefully you're still hanging around and watching this. So that was a deep dive. You got to hear it. You got to see it. And Let me know what you think about it. I'm curious uh, what other people think of these guitars. It's definitely not for everyone. But no guitar is for everyone, I'd say. Um, I'm not a big fan of every single kind of guitar. So there's a, there's a type of guitar for everybody. Who do these appeal to? They appealed to me. I'm a huge Beatles fan. Definitely uh, appealed to me. I don't think you're gonna want somebody that's like high gain metal probably not gonna want to play this and uh, let's get into the pros and cons and my, my thoughts about it and then if I recommend the guitar or not so I'll start with it the pros the cosmetics looks really nice I mean it's sharp looking 100% uh, flawless no I'll get into that in a second going down the guitar the fretwork is fine the electronics and pickups I don't feel they need to be replaced I really find the Epiphone and this includes the uh, inspired by Gibson stuff I don't think you need to replace that stuff. I mean, the, the pickups, that's like a tonal preference, but the actual pots and the switches and stuff, they feel really good. They feel fine. I'd say they're on par with uh, like the Fender Player Series stuff. You just don't need to change that stuff out unless you just wanna fool around and mod stuff for no reason. Uh, I like the tones I get from these pickups. I don't feel I need to change these to like more expensive P90s at all. It's just something, you know, I watch other videos. I've seen other people do uh, mods and stuff. It's also not easy to get into one of these guitars if you did want to change the stuff out. Uh, I really like the weight, super lightweight, surprisingly light. Like I thought, honestly, the size of it, I had uh, a Starcaster last year and it's around the same size and it's a lot heavier than this. So it's really nice and light. And uh, the other pro is if you like the Beatles, I think you'll probably just, you know, you'll dig it. You'll dig this pony. All right, let's get into the cons. There's a few things. It's not perfect. I, I did mention the... Uh, the cosmetics were really nice. There's a few imperfections that I, I probably pointed out earlier, or, or maybe you saw them in the photos, like the painting along the F holes here, it's not perfect. Uh, it looks like there's a pencil mark along the neck here where the, the set neck is put in. Uh, what else did I notice? I think that's pretty much it. It's just, you know, there's just little fine things. That being said, this is one guitar. People will tell me there's QC issues on Gibsons as well. So I don't think, it's not a deal breaker, right? It, it, it's not gonna change the effect uh, or the sound. It's not going to change the guitar basically. It's just little cosmetic things. This is a big one and this is one I mentioned with people that probably play a lot of high gain. When you have the neck on 10, 
the neck pickup. So you have the neck volume at 10, and you've got a lot of gain, you get squeal. It squeals like a, like a pig. Is that even a thing? Is that a saying these days? It squeals for sure. Dial it down to five, you roll it back, and the squealing stops. I think that's inherent with the, the hollow body. I think you'd get the same kind of thing with an acoustic guitar if you had a neck pickup. It's just, I don't think it's the pickups. I really don't, I think it's the hollow body. And I'm not an expert, that's just my, that's just my understanding and what I, what I think is going on. Too much output from the neck. Why it's not happening in the bridge pickup, I don't know. I don't know, I could be totally wrong. Probably am, so I don't know. This is another big one. This is like an older style kind of guitar, right? Uh, the, uh, the fret access, the higher fret access. If you're a lead player, and you play up past like 16, up into like the 20s and stuff here, you can't reach it. You physically cannot actually get to it. Like you can get, here's me. You see where my hand is on the back, I just wanna show this. That's my hand curled around as far as you can go. You can get up to here. Unless you got like crazy long stretchy fingers, you're gonna have trouble. Maybe you can do it, I don't know. I don't think you can. So I'm gonna say it's not for lead players. This is like a rhythm guitar. This is, you know, singer, songwriter, rhythm guitar. So that's my cons, that's my pros and cons. I didn't do any acoustic sounding tests, but. It plays like an acoustic. Not as, not as nice, but you definitely don't need to have it plugged in. If you're sitting on the couch one day, just one day, not every day. And uh, you, you're like, I don't have my amp and I just wanna, you know, fool around. You can play it acoustically, which is really cool. That's that's what semi-hollows and hollow body guitars. Actually, I'd say hollow body because I have a semi-hollow and it do, you can't really play it the same way. It doesn't do the same thing. It doesn't resonate the same way. So, do I recommend the guitar? I recommend it for people that are like me. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a good recommendation? I'd say check one out. I can't say it's for everybody. It's not for everybody, for sure. Listen to the pros and cons that I mentioned. Do any of those, are they a deal breaker for you? They are for certain people, they aren't for me. I'm a, like playing in my basement kind of guy. I'm not out playing live. Would this be good for playing live? I don't know what the guitar is gonna sound like live with it cranked up. Are you gonna get a lot of feedback? Let me know in the comments if you have one of these and you do play with it live. How do you manage the, uh, the feedback? Because it's, it's an issue, right? It's not just this uh, guitar. And I will mention the uh, the whole high access on the frets thing. That's also happening with the uh, the USA model or any of them. It's not it's not because it's made in China Epiphone. That has nothing to do with it. It's not like a thing like that. It's just this model of guitar. So yeah, I do recommend it. That's my personal opinion. I like it. I like it for me. I can't say you'll like it, but. Uh, you know, check one out if you can. Give me some feedback in the comments. Let me know what you think of the whole casino lines. Are you a Beatles fan? Do you not care about the Beatles, but you like the casino anyways? Check out the description, all the links to everything below. Check out my merch store. Check out guitartricks.com if you want to do some online lessons. All right, as always, play guitar and have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Atari. Atari who wears an Atari shirt? E.T. was my favorite game. This is the Epiphone Casino in a beautiful, no. This is the, okay. This is the Epiphone spitting.